Elaine, I am left to liberate. I have a feeling you may have sent it my way. And so I will take that again. Uh, Bob Schieffer along with us, joined now by Anthony Salvanto, CBS News, uh, Director of Elections, uh, to discuss, uh, Anthony, the speech that we're going to see from Donald Trump and specifically what he must do with it. You uh, can look into the math now to know exactly who he still needs to reach. The numbers suggest that there was work to be done here this week. So with the biggest speech of his, however, NASA political life in front of him, who is it that he needs to touch? Well, Josh, you know, I'm looking around the stands here. I see a lot of signs that say women for Trump. Yep. I think that's really very purposeful because he is running right now about seven points behind even where Mitt Romney was with white women in the polling right now. And Republicans have to win that demographic. So, you know, we pollsters, we break those down, break down those demos. Everybody says, oh, swing voters, swing voters. These are the ones who specifically are. They live in the suburbs. They're going to swing these states if he can swing them. And they want to hear a softer tone out of Donald Trump tonight. That is what they tell us in the polling. We saw last night um, not just uh, some more of the gloom and doom that has really marked this convention to this point, but the rancor that marked the primary uh, cycle uh, when Ted Cruz refused to endorse and was summarily booed off the stage. It was the moment, the headline today, and it certainly caused... Uh, certainly dominated uh, the, the commentariat today. Is it too early to know if that had an impact on, on, on his numbers? Well, look, start off coming into this convention, Trump was about 10 or 11 points back of where he needs to be among Republicans. And coming into this convention, 72 percent. And those numbers, I do want to just say, yeah. coming in, he was somewhere between, not to be somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of Republican voters, but it is accepted. He needs to have that number in the 90s. When everybody throws around the word, your base, your base, folks, think about what that means. It is what you build on. If you have a shaky foundation, a shaky base, you've got to have that solid. And by solid, I mean you've got to get over 90 percent is what he needs of Republicans. He's on his way but he is not there yet. He's in the 70s, he needs to be in the 80s, and he needs to get the 90s. So, if you think about what it might mean for Ted Cruz's voters to get a signal that maybe they're not you know, going to be entirely behind Donald Trump, I think that's a lot of why you saw that pushback last night. He has taken opportunities, particularly of late, to use his public speaking engagements to reach out to Bernie Sanders voters as well. Um, how effective has it been, and what can he do, perhaps, to go after another sliver slice of a, of a new political pie. You are going to hear tonight, I bet, a lot about the need for change and a lot about how the system writ large, the political system, does not work or is rigged. That's the same kind of message that Bernie Sanders voters were listening to in their primary. The big difference, because so far Bernie Sanders voters are not voting for Donald Trump, the big difference is how you get there and how you fix it. So if he just says things are broken, I don't think he gets many Bernie Sanders voters. But if he talks to them in a way that says, okay, we agree that it's rigged, now here's something we have in common about the way to fix it. Whatever that is, whatever he comes up with, that's something folks watching should, at home should be listening for. Is there an outreach there? Because they do at least agree on the problem, not the solution. Bob, then in synthesizing these metrics and hearing what Donald Trump and really the GOP, if they are in fact one and the same, have had to do this week thus far, do you think it's been successful to this point? Well, I don't think this party is unified by any stretch of the imagination. And I mean, I thought the latest example of that was last night. I mean, you know, let's think about this for a minute. The moderate wing, the Bush-Romney wing of the Republican Party, they didn't even come. They're not here. Then you have Ted Cruz making it pretty official last night that he's not going to endorse Donald Trump. And you know, the interesting thing about that is the Trump people their version of events is that it really doesn't matter. They think that this race is going to be decided on one thing. If they can drive Hillary Clinton's negatives higher than Donald Trump's, they think they win. The reverse, and I think the Clinton people feel the same way, if they think they can drive Donald Trump's negatives higher than hers, then they think 
they will win. Is that a, a viable strategy? I don't know. But I'll tell you this, this is what they're thinking. 